Hi everyone, the purpose of this video is to help you to cover the entire syllabus and I'm going to be teaching you physics, chemistry and biology. So in this class, let's deal with physics. This is the first topic of the syllabus, which is measurement. So I'll be dealing with measurements, measuring instruments and dimension in this class. So make sure you stay true to the end. First thing is get your pen ready, get your book ready, be ready to write, take a pause at every moment in time write the notes write the definition let let your mind follow the class through and you're going to see that you're going to get the best of the class so welcome back to primary classroom once again so in this video we're going to be talking about the introduction to measurements we're going to be talking about fundamentals and derived quantities we're going to be talking about multiples and sub multiples, and we're going to be focusing on basic unit conversion how you do conversions in physics then we'll focus on measuring instruments you can take different instruments to do measurements in physics. So we're going to be focusing on those measuring instruments. Then we look at some important instruments like the vernier caliper, the micrometer screw gauge, all of those instruments used to do some measurements in physics. And we're going to do some bit of calculations on all of those instruments. That is the measurement of volume, length, and mass, and time. So we're going to focus on that. Then finally, we spend our energy on dimension. So this class is going to be all about that. Then we'll solve questions at the end of the day. So stay true to the end of the video. Take a pause when you feel you are tired. But we want to cover the entire syllabus. So I want each video to cover the entire thing you need to know per topic. So take a pause if you're tired. Take a walk and come back to your video. Make sure you write all through the video. And if you're yet to subscribe to our channel, please make sure you do before moving ahead with this class. So let's move on to the topic. Now, when you're talking about measurements in physics, measurement is defined, so right. Measurement is defined as the determination of certain physical quantities. Everything in the universe must be measured. I've told you about matter before. How many times have your parents sent you to the market and you had to buy a particular amount of something? That is measurement in play. Now, if not for the sake of measurement, a whole lot of times your parents wouldn't have been able to get you the Christmas clothes, the New Year shoes, and all of those ways. Because I could remember those days, the parents would take a measurement of our food and they would get us a brand new shoe that we're going to wear for the Christmas or for the New Year. So as you are now, which means that measurement is one of the important parts of life. If I give you five naira, you know the difference between five naira and one thousand naira. And why? Because you know one thousand naira carries more value than five naira. But all the same, that is still Naira. But how do you know the difference between 1,000 and 5 Naira? It is still measurement. So in physics, every calculation requires measurement, requires units, requires you to talk about, if I, if I say 5 meter per second per second, or let's say if I say 5 meter per second squared, and I say 5 meter per second, the unit already tells you something. 5 meter per second squared is talking about acceleration. And 5 meter per second is talking about velocity. Do you understand that? So when you are doing calculations in physics, measurement is also very, very important. So the determination of all of those physical quantities we deal with in physics is what we deal with in measurement. So now, let's move on to the next thing, which are the fundamental and the derived quantities. Now, a whole lot of times we talk about thousands of quantities in the universe. But we have seven major fundamental quantities. Don't forget that. We have how many fundamental quantities? Seven. So first is what are fundamental quantities? Fundamental quantities are the basic quantities on which every other quantity depends. And that's why it is called fundamental. So you need to write that definition down for fundamental quantities. You can always take a pause if I'm too fast for you. And this is the aspect where you can control me. You can take me back if you want. So now, when you're talking about fundamental quantities, fundamental quantities are defined as the basic quantity on which every other quantity is depend. So there are seven fundamental quantities, like I mentioned. One, mass, length, time, temperature, luminous intensity, amount of substance, and electric current. These are the seven fundamental quantities. Now, every quantity has a unit. So the unit of mass is kilogram. The unit of length is meter. The unit of time is second. The unit of temperature is Kelvin. The unit of amount of substance is mole. The unit of luminous intensity is candela. The unit of electric current is ampere. So these are the units for all of these fundamental quantities. Now, as we move on in physics, you're going to see that every other quantity will depend on these 
combination of quantities that we just talked about. And that is where the term derived quantity comes from. So derived quantities are quantities that are obtained from systematic combination of the fundamental quantities. So what are fundamental quantities? Basic quantities. What are derived quantities? From the word derived, you obtain them. So you derive them. So those are called derived quantities. Now, what are the examples of derived quantities? For example, the volume. Volume is derived from length times breadth times height. And if you see length, length is a meter, breadth is a meter, height is a meter. So the unit for volume is meter cube because it's derived from meter times meter times meter. Do you get that? The next quantity to look at is density. Density is given as mass per unit volume. What is the unit for mass? Kilogram. You remember we just derived volume now. What is the unit for volume? Meter cube. So that means that the unit for density is going to be kilogram per meter cube. So the next one to look at is velocity. You remember velocity is what? Velocity is displacement per unit time. So when you're talking about displacement, it is talking about shortest distance between two points. Now, distance, what do you think should be the unit of distance? Very good, that's meter. So what is the unit of time? Second. So meter per second is the unit of velocity. So meaning that velocity is derived from displacement, which is distance, and from time, which is measured in second. So all of these are known as derived quantities. Now, there are thousands of derived quantities. I'm going to upload a picture for you to see other forms of derived quantities. But you can study them to know more about them because you can be asked in exams. So now, the next thing to move on to is what we call multiples and submultiples. In physics, some values might look so much, so cumbersome, like 0 0.00006. Now, 0 0.006 can be written in standard form. Now, if this value is written in standard form, how can I represent it in a simple unit? For example, 6 times 10 is per minus 3 meter can still be written as 6 millimeter. It is too mouthful to say 6 times 10 is per minus 3 meter. That could have just been written as 6 millimeter. Now, it is important to note that in physics. And why are we saying that is that we try to make every unit, every quantity, to be simplified. So that value that makes quantities, the physical quantities to be simplified, is called the multiples and the submultiples. Because you can have the negative one and you can have the positive one. So for the negative multiples, we have from 10 raised per minus 1 to 10 raised per minus 24. So now, the 10 raised per minus 1 is deci. 10 raised per minus 2 is centi. 10 raised per minus 3 is milli. 10 raised per minus 6 is micro. 10 raised per minus 9 is nano. 10 raised per minus 12 is pico. 10 raised per minus 15 is femto. 10 raised per minus 18 is ato. 10 raised per minus 21 is zepto. And 10 raised per minus 24 is yocto. So you need to know all of these values. At least know from 10 raised per minus 1 to 10 raised per minus 12. Every of your exam will bring all of this into the values. As we move on to physics, we are going to see how we apply all of these things to solving questions. So as you have the negative multiples, you also have the positive multiples. So these multiples help you to, help you to convert in physics. So if you are given 6 millimeter, 6 centimeter, and 6 micrometer to convert in physics, then milli is 10 raised per minus 3. So that's just saying 6 times 10 raised per minus 3 meter, 6 times 10 raised per minus 2 meter, and 6 times 10 raised per minus 6 meter. Because you're going to be needing the fundamental units to solve a whole lot of questions in physics. So if you ask to convert 6 microfarad and 8 picofarad to farad, how will you do that? You remember, micro is 10 raised per minus 6, pico is 10 raised per minus 12, and that gives you the value. So that would be 6 times 10 raised per minus 6 farad and 8 times 10 raised per minus 12 farad. That's how you solve it. So we have some measuring instruments used to determine some quantities in the laboratory. For example, if you want to determine mass, you need your weighing balance or chemical balance. If you want to determine weight, you need what we call a spring balance. We're going to be looking at the differences between mass and weight later. Now, if you're talking about volume, you can determine the volumes of regular objects and volumes of irregular objects. To determine the volumes of regular objects, it has a volume. So it has dimension. You can determine the volume of a cone, volume of a sphere, volume of a cylinder. All of these formulas, you must know them. So write them down. How to determine the volume of a cone because we are going to be using them to deal with questions. So for an irregular object, how to determine the volume is your shape of an irregular object is not regular. 
you cannot find the dimension of the object. So what you are going to do is you can put it in a volume of water. Then according to Archimedes' principle, when the total object is immersed in water, it's going to displace its volume. So through that, you can determine the volume of the object. So let's look at these three major instruments. You can measure the length of a field, the length of anything using what we call the tape rule. But now, there are three major instruments I want us to focus on, which is the meter rule. You must have used the meter rule in the laboratory before, the vernier caliper and the micrometer screw gauge. The meter rule is used to measure a short distance from, from one point to another point, while the vernier caliper is used to measure the internal and external diameter of an object, either a test tube, a round object, or any object. So make sure you write that down. Now, micrometer screw gauge is a very sensitive instrument that is used to measure the external diameter of a small object, a very small object. So whenever you want to determine the diameter of a small object accurately, you need what we call micrometer screw gauge. Now, when you are taking your reading, if you take your meter rule, you check. Meter rule reads 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 in centimeters. So there's what we call the reading accuracy, the precision of an instrument. So I'm going to arrange them from number one to number three so that you remember they are reading accuracy easily. Meter rule measures to one decimal place in centimeter. That's 0 0.1 centimeter. That's why I'm making it number one. Number two is vernier caliper. It reads to two decimal places in centimeter. That's 0 0.01 centimeter. Just note this. We are going to be using it to solve some bit of questions as we move on. The third one is micrometer screw gauge. Micrometer screw gauge measures to three decimal places in centimeter. So you can see from number one, two, and three. Now, what is their precision? Their precision is half of the degree of accuracy. So just note that for now in your notes. At the end of the day, I might be doing one or short videos just to explain some things deeper or better, but for the further purpose. But for the sake of your exam, all I'm saying is going to be needed and you're going to see that you're going to do well at the end of the day. Just make sure you follow through, solve all the questions at the end of the class and make sure that you get back to me if you have any problem. So now let's look at how vernier caliper works. Vernier caliper has the main scale and it also has what we call the vernier scale. So when you are taking the reading, the reading is always taken for the main scale plus the vernier scale. That gives you the reading for vernier caliper. Same thing with micrometer screw gauge. The reading is the main scale plus the vernier scale. So how do you do this calculation? Let's quickly look into it. So this question says that what is the reading on the vernier caliper? So there's an instrument. Now, the main scale reading, you are going to take it from the top before that point of coincidence. So you take your main scale reading from the top, then you take your vernier scale reading below. So at a point where the line coincides below, that is where you stop your reading. So if you check the main scale reading, so you are going to have 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. That is the main scale reading. So your main scale reading in this instrument is 1.30 centimeter. Since the instrument is calibrated in centimeter. So let's look at the vernier scale reading. Look at that line below. So you start your numbering from that zero, from the first line. After you have done your main scale reading below, then you start counting until you see that point of coincidence where the line on the vernier scale coincides with the line on the main scale. So let's count. So before that line of coincidence, how many do we have? So if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you have nine lines. Now, for the vernier scale, it is nine lines. But your vernier caliper measures to 0 0.01 in centimeter, in 0 0.01 centimeter in accuracy. So what you are going to do is you multiply that nine with 0 0.01, and that gives you 0 0.09 centimeter. So that gives you the vernier scale reading. So the reading of the instrument is going to be your main scale plus the vernier scale, and that is going to be 1.30 plus 0 0.09. So that will give you 1.39 centimeter, and that is the reading of the vernier caliper. So how about micrometer screw gauge? The reading of micrometer screw gauge also gives main scale plus vernier scale. So the main scale reading is the one on your left-hand side, and the one on the right-hand side is your vernier scale reading. So the point of coincidence of the line that comes from the main scale, where it coincides with the line that comes from the vernier scale, that is where your vernier, vernier scale reading is taken. So let's solve this question to understand how micrometer screw gauge works. So 
The question says that we should take the reading on the micrometer screw gauge. Now, if you check the instrument very well, the main scale reading is 0, 0 0.51, 1 1.52, 2.53. So the main scale reading reads 3 millimeter. That is the unit of measurement in this case. And you remember, the vernier scale reading, I said that is the line that coincides with the line on the vernier scale. When the main scale and the vernier scale coincide, that is the line we're going to take for the vernier scale reading. So if you check the instruments very well, you see that the vernier scale coincides at 21 millimeter. So now, how do we do our measurement? So you say 21 multiplied by 0.01 millimeter. You remember, the main reading accuracy for micrometer screw gauge is 0.001 centimeter. But if you convert that to millimeter, you are going to get 0 .00, 0 0.01 millimeter. So you multiply that 0 0.01 millimeter with 21, and you will get 0 0.21. And if you add that to 3, you get 3.21 as your answer. So that is how you do your reading on micrometer screw gauge. And we have also done that for vernier caliper. So get used to that. So let's look at dimension. So dimension is defined as the representation of physical quantities in their basic form. That is dimension. So let's look at it. The basic form of dimension, mass, is measured in kilogram. So we use capital M to represent mass. Length is measured in meter. So we use capital L to represent length. Time is, is measured in second. We use capital T to represent time. And that is why dimension is MLT. Electric current is measured in ampere. You can use capital I or capital A to represent the dimension of electric current. Temperature is measured in Kelvin. You can use theta or, or capital K to represent the dimension of temperature. So now, how do we do calculations on dimension? Dimension is very important. It can help us to tell if a formula is correct, homogeneity of reaction, and all of those things. So now, let's look at some basic calculations on dimension. So the first question is, find the dimension of force. Now, force is equal to mass times acceleration. What is the unit of mass? Kilogram. What is the unit of acceleration? Meter per second per second. That's meter per second squared. So if you check the dimension, kilogram, that is capital M. Meter, that is capital L. Per second squared, that is capital T raised to the power of minus 2. So the dimension of force is MLT minus 2. So next is, what is the dimension of density? You just need to know the formula, then know the units, and represent it with those dimension forms. So now, density is mass over volume. And what is mass? Kilogram. What is volume? Meter cube. Meaning that the dimension or the units for density is going to be kilogram per meter cube. And what is the dimension for kilogram? Capital M. What is the dimension for meter? That is length. That is capital L. Raised to the power of, min raised to the power of minus 3. And that is the dimension of density. ML raised to the power of minus 3. So let us look for the dimension of velocity. You can take a pause to solve this. Now, what is the dimension of velocity? Velocity is displacement over time. Units of displacement is meter. Time is second. So the unit is meter per second. Now, when you have meter, meter is going to be capital L. Second is going to be capital T raised to the power of minus 1. So the dimension of velocity is length, that is L, T raised to the power of minus 1. I'm going to do a short video to show you more on dimension, but make sure you subscribe and you get updates on every of the videos I upload. So you are going to do these questions for me. Find the dimension of pressure. What is the formula for pressure? Force per unit area. Find the dimension of gravitational constant. Find the dimension of electromotive force and find the dimension of momentum. You can leave the answer in the comment section. If you have any problem, you should let me know. So at the end of the day, I'm going to upload some questions for you to solve or measurement. These are all the basic things you need to know about measurement. Pick up your past questions and start solving. If you have any problem, don't hesitate to let me know. I will help you to attend to those problems. I'll see you in the next episode. If you yet to subscribe, please subscribe and help us share this video with other students out there so that you encourage us to do more so that you can learn from the comfort of your home and everything gets easier for you. I love you and I'll see you in the next episode.